I am Ted King, and this is Vermont. I love Vermont. I mean, I, I really love Vermont. It's the rolling landscape. It is the forest, it's the trees. The riding here is eclectic. You're on these just rolling, beautiful, pristine gravel roads for, for miles and miles and miles on end. There is gravel everywhere. The VTXL route is a 300 plus mile route that spans the entire state of Vermont, north to south, from the northern Canadian border, snaking all the way south down to the southern Massachusetts border. 95% of it is on gravel roads. I wanted to show people my home roads. I wanted to show people where I've fallen in love with cycling. So we were queued up for the second of Ted's Excellent Adventures in 2023. This is a communal bike packing experience that I created in the, in the off season and present the adventure of doing it over multiple days. But over the course of the summer, we got absolutely hammered with rain. You can see this river behind me on 103 is moving fast. But roads in central and southern Vermont are still being flooded and washed out as the rain continues. Property damage could reach the tens of millions of dollars. Roads were washed out, roads were closed, towns were closed, bridges were gone. Given the flooding, I ended up canceling the ride. The VTXL route was impassable in July. I knew late summer there was still some devastation. Basically, by the time October rolled around, I wanted to investigate it for myself. It's one thing to go drive 300 miles, but you want to see, you want to touch it, you want to feel it, you want to, you want to see what the course is is like. I wasn't yet interested in making it an open public event, so I gathered up a couple of friends. I called my buddy Tim. We called our other friend Pete, who was a New Englander born and raised. And we went to scope out the route. We wanted to see what was possible. The Tim Johnson special, he taught me this. Always travel with a toothbrush. And I'm here for the maple syrup and the general stores. Day one, we ended up getting a little bit of a late start. Yeah, it's certainly possible to do the route over three days and two nights, but we quickly decided that, that doing it a little bit longer was probably going to be our, our schedule for this trip. So yeah, it's good to have a plan, but not necessarily glue yourself to a schedule. The riding in Vermont is endless. I mean, for such a small place, there's so much variety. It's like a set of capillaries. I mean, there are roads just everywhere. There are infinite ways to get from point A to point B. And most of those here in Vermont are gravel. We have a big climb coming up though. What makes this route conducive to bikepacking is it's out there, but then you still have the support of towns. You have stores, you have convenience stores, you have hotels, and, and well, I guess we don't have any hotels. So we ended up on day one making it down to East Burke, Vermont, which is this really cool cycling mecca for mountain bikers. It made a really great opportunity to, to camp at a friend's backyard. Bed. The coffee packets are in the bike. Totally miscalculated. After such a warm day the day before, it was impressive how low the temperatures dipped, but over the course of a very few morning hours, it warmed up quickly.
We had filters, we had a fair amount of food, but it was quickly obvious that it's not something we need along the way. Because you are in and out of towns frequently, you can drop into the convenience stores, the general stores, and refresh and refuel and, and grab the, the necessities. For sure, we were able to pack really light on this route. You see the majority of the state on this route. Sure, you're only on a single route from north to south. You're not going into Montpelier. You're not in Burlington. You're not in the biggest cities in Vermont, if we can even call them that. You see the pulse of Vermont, which is quiet, but that's, that's understood going in. Ended up rolling into Tunbridge, tiny little town in Vermont, basically near the center of the state and camped in another friend's backyard. After a really hot, humid day, it was amazing to jump into a pond afterwards. Where we ended up in Tunbridge is, is basically the exact halfway point. Which route is as challenging as ever. It is basically a thousand feet of climbing for every 10 miles, and it's it couldn't be more consistent. We're exactly halfway in both distance and elevation. It was at the very tail end of yesterday that we saw a, a really, really torn up class four, and I'm, I'm expecting to see quite a bit more of that today. We are trying to get going early today to potentially do the full push, do the final 150 miles. Expectation is Honestly, the roads are going to deteriorate. I think a lot of the flooding um, was really heavily concentrated down south in towns like Londonderry, South Londonderry. Morning of day three, we're rolling through town and see a road closed sign, go by that, and we end up meeting Chad. And he works for an engineering company and he was surveying the damage from a road that had washed entirely down into a river. The majority of the road still exists. It's obviously tremendously potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. How long is a rebuilding process to repair something like this? It all depends. That's our famous words. It all depends. I'm yeah. thinking that trying to get all of these yeah. at least passable before winter. Yeah. We used to do on a normal year, we would do one to two slope stabilizations a year. And now in the last, since July, we've done six, five or six. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And we have another one coming up next week over in Bristol. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise that it took that long to go buy a road close sign. We'd seen some roads that had been patched up, but this was the kind of damage that just stops traffic and mandatory detour, mandatory long, long detour. Well, from here on out, this was the beginning of phase where we saw a lot of road close signs. We saw a lot more damage in the south. That is some gnarly flood damage. They rebuilt a land bridge replace the actual bridge. Cheers. Well done. Soldier on, partner. Night three, we end up in South Londonderry, but we end up at Pete's uncle's house, which was a really cool coincidence. It can be really convenient to go bike packing in places that you have friends, you have acquaintances, you have you have places that you know you can stay. It's like a city down here in Stratton. It is kind of like a city with like three proper establishments all within a hundred yard radius. Wake up on day four, even though we only have 50 miles to go in the shortest day by distance, we have the biggest climb to go over, which is Stratton Mountain. It's about a eight mile climb, a little bit stair step, but entirely class four. This establishment is home of the world's largest 
chocolate peanut butter cup at 228 pounds. And this is a good portion of that. There it is. On one side of this pillar, it says VT. On the other side, it says Massachusetts. And that's it. That's the, the only demarcation between the two states. That's your finish line. It's, it's very unceremonious. It is most certainly anticlimactic, but by the time you get here, you are just ready to be done. 72 cumulative hours later, four days of riding later, we made it here to the beautiful Vermont, Massachusetts state line. The ride was spectacular. And I mean, I think what we saw was a lot of pockets of repair. It's really encouraging to see how much road repair has been done. Um, yeah, truth be told, it was a lot less damaged uh, in hindsight than I, than I had expected. So what's really unique to Vermont is you see these back roads, gravel roads that look like they're, they're you know, used incredibly infrequently, but so much of Vermont is rural. You cut up these roads and it really, it impedes day-to-day -day normal living. These roads really are imperative. So it's great to see how quickly they have been repaired. I mean, green light for the route. This was a bit of a test case to see how much of the VTXL was open. I had some friends ride it late summer, July, August, and you know, they said it was, a, it was a wreck. It was completely unrideable. It's cool to see that this has become a thing. I mean, that's, that's what I love about bike packings. It's like, it's silent, it exists, and people can just do it at any time. I don't know what the next challenge is. Maybe do it in the winter or something completely foolish. But the wheels are turning. There's another, there's a Ted's Excellent Adventure in the in the works one way or another. And I'll definitely be riding this route again. It's, it's absolutely stunning. Yeah.